The views expressed on the Ward and Bradley show are not necessarily those held by the hosts, Ward and Bradley, nor those of the proprietors of the website, wardandbradley.com. Five, four, three, two, one, fire! Let's make some magic. It is magic time. Uh, hello, and welcome once again to the Warren and Bradley Show. I am one of your hosts, Bradley Victor. I am the other host, Warren Van. And we are recording episode 27 now on a Thursday evening. That's um, correct. We're doing it a few days earlier than we normally would because young Warren is off on another adventure. Where Do you even you know where I'm going? I have no idea. You're um, doing this is for Memorial Day weekend. Yes. You're going on a trip. I'm uh, <clears throat> going to go to Eastern Washington. Okay. With a girlfriend. We're going to go to Spokane. Why are you going to Spokane? I don't know, because I've, I've just driven through Spokane. never actually stayed there yeah. for any time. So we're going to go there. Is that, That's the destination to well, Spokane? Or is there first other night, Spokane. activities planned? Well, first night, Spokane. Next night, Walla Walla. Now, Walla Walla, too. I've, I, I've been through Spokane. I've never been to Walla Walla. All I know about Walla Walla are the Walla Walla sweet onions. Yeah, that's what everyone says, yeah. And they have apples there, too, I and guess. And the penitentiary but. is there. Oh, yeah, the advantage. penitentiary, yeah. yeah. Uh, are there any, are there tourist activities yes, that you're planning on it's wine on country in? over there, apparently. Oh, yeah, that is that is the Washington wine country. And yeah. apparently the town's very quaint. Mm. I, It is in the opposite corner of Washington State from where we live, right. so... We don't get over there to Eastern Washington very often, you know. Those of you from other regions in the country, Eastern Washington is basically a different state yeah, than they, Western Washington. Yeah, they, sometimes they want to, like, you know, well, get their it's, own state occasionally. It's funny because, basically, we've got the Cascade Mountain Range that divides the state. Pretty much one-third of it is to the west, and two-thirds of it is to the east. Yes. To the west, it is temperate, rainy, green liberal blue state blue state to the east is rural insanely conservative and very dry it's like red state it's basically it's the actual west it is the west it's the what it's the west you think of it's still kind of montana e or yes. like i don't know the west coast isn't like the west no you know and but if you get over the cascade mountains you got like their cactuses desert there's like yeah. rolling dry grass areas it's All interesting. That stuff. It's funny because basically Washington is completely dominated by King County, which is the Seattle Tacoma area. And so even though in land mass most of the state is very conservative the cities basically dictate all the Puget social Sound policy. area. Yeah, it's the same for Oregon, where the Willamette Valley completely dominates. Everything goes on there, and right. then the rest of the state is a red state, basically. Yeah, exactly, it's country people. It's kind of funny. It's the yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to get in there, you know, get to hang out around people who voted for George Bush, mm -hmm. which is something that we don't ever see here. Not very often. No. Um, yeah, it'll be nice to drive around. It's interesting. Uh, Spokane seems like a shithole to me. And I know a lot of people from Spokane who now live here. Yes. Who all say they hated it, and that's why they came here. That's the um, reputation of Spokane. Apparently there's lots of meth and it, drugs. You hear and meth a lot thrown shit, out yeah. there when you say Spokane. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the white trash drug of choice, and there's a lot of white trash there, apparently. Yeah. it's So that's going to be my weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Um, Something different. It's you know. big. It's big. It's surprisingly large. It is barely the second largest city in the state. Yeah, Just barely. eking out ahead of uh, Tacoma, the right. city of destiny. Right, right, right. And Tacoma's a shithole, too. Yes. Yeah. It has that reputation as well. <laughs> well, what's the weather supposed to be like? Is it going to be hot? I think it's supposed to be hot on Saturday. I think it's supposed to be pretty nice the entire time. It's way hotter in Eastern Washington because we have a rain shadow here because <laughs> yeah. of the Cascade Mountain Range. <laughs> Um, and they don't get any rain there because of the Cascade Mountain. I range. like the fact that people in Romania are listening I to us get to learn so much about well, this the is very Northwest. interesting. Oh, it's a fascinating area. Uh, yeah, so because of Warren's happy trip, um, we're recording on a Thursday when normally we would record Sunday, which means 
some of our natural natural features are not going to air. Uh, we won't have a specific beard off update. I know a lot of you were looking forward to that, but you'll have to wait for next week. Um, we will post pictures, the two week pictures. I am um, going to send a picture from Walla Walla. That was one of my assignments for Warren. Yes. He had to take a picture on Sunday, which is the two week mark of his beard. I'll try to make the picture somehow Walla Walla specific. You I should, don't know how I'll do maybe that. Maybe you can have, get an onion. Are they in season right now? I don't, I know. don't know. Do onions have a season? Onion season is. I don't know. I, m- I imagine they just onion seasons like every other season, which is like September, October, right? I guess but it's a root vegetable, so I'm not sure. Oh god! Apparently, those onions, those walla walla sweets, you can just eat them like an apple. Oh, they're supposed to be delightful. <laughs> um, I know we've, I've, I've even allowed Nally chili walla walla oh, yeah. onion flavored, and I've enjoyed every bite. Washington kind of leads in a lot of the agricultural arts. We have the best. Well, since you mentioned that, yes, we have. Good well, we have a lot of apples. We don't have yeah. very good apples. Well, the, the the good ones get sent away. We get the shitty ones, and we also send a lot of the shitty ones away too. Those red yeah. delicious ones, which are terrible. <laughs> I love. I like the Fuji ones. Those are good. F- Fuji are good. Right, um, quit naming apples. Um, <laughs> um, the county, Whatcom County, where we are right uh, now, is the number one raspberry producing county in. The United States, that is I true. believe. Skagit County, the number one tulip producing county. In the Western Hemisphere. In the Western Hemisphere. Yes. Uh, a lot of cherries. <laughs> Good cherries. <laughs> yes. That's but the a... cherries and the apples are grown in eastern Washington. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You we... need the dryer. You can't have so much rain. It ruins the crop. Yeah, yeah, So we we have plenty of berries and uh, tulips here. It's also dairy country here. Oh, yes. We have a lot of dairy cows running around. Not cheeses. running around. Standing around, well, I guess. Yeah. Um, cheeses, country. yes. <laughs> These are the things that go on here. Yeah, that's very exciting. If we ever left the confines of Bellingham, we could go out and see all these interesting things that are going on in the county. Uh, I roam around the county quite a bit. Oh, well, for work. You get out there, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You see the country. It all looks kind of the same. Yeah. Some two-lane rural road. There's lots of pickup trucks. There's little towns every once in a while. You and I appreciate when you're driving down those uh, two-lane rural roads, mm-hmm. and there's, like, crops growing on the side of the road. Yeah. And you're like, what the hell is that? Because you don't know. You're from the city. Yeah. And then sometimes people put up signs, and they'll be like, these are blueberries. <laughs> I never noticed Yes, this. yes. I've seen the people do this before, and it really, I'm like, that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Because most of the time, you're just driving around, you see, like, rows and rows and rows of something. Well, I can, I can tell you can corn. You corn is. <laughs> Corn, you can tell. The other stuff, though, who knows what it is. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Anything, if if any of you kids out there listening to the podcast uh, behind your parents' back or have to write an an essay about Washington State, then we just gave you the crib notes right there. You can cite this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) All right, then. So lately I've been uh, kind of hermitish. I haven't gone out in weeks like oh, three or four weeks, I think. I have not gone out at all, haven't gone to a bar, haven't gone to a, see a show. I uh, haven't really interacted with any other humans than you, pretty much. And really? You, not you, the listener, but you, Warren, and, and just gone to work. Uh, maybe that's a good thing that I'm growing the beard because it can the hermit beard will match my hermit inclinations that I have going right now. And I think I've just been I'm in one of my periods where I'm annoyed with people. Yeah, they're just irritating. Yeah. And today was a perfect example where I was almost to the point of just freaking out. And I never have just like completely freaked out. And I kind of am curious as to what that would entail. But I could just feel this tension welling up inside me as the day progressed and it was getting worse and worse and worse and it was getting to this <laughs> boiling point i almost freaked out at a little kid today oh wow uh what's just, the kid do oh my god there's just all this shit going on like every little annoying thing that anyone could do they were doing and they're all just completely self-absorbed and unaware of the effect that they have on other people around yes. them they don't give a shit a good example is yesterday i had to go to fucking san juan island to work which it, entails me getting up at 3.30 in the morning, driving to a ferry, getting on the ferry, going to an island, working all day, then getting on a ferry again, and then driving home. Like it was, It's like a 14, 15, 16-hour day, <laughs> and it's annoying. And while on the ferry, you know, the ferry leaves dock at 6 o'clock in the morning, and most people there are tradesmen going to the island because apparently there aren't any skilled laborers. That no, live it's on mostly an just island. people that work at like ice cream shops and stuff. <laughs> yeah, or like rich that. people who rich people, the people who don't who have work at ice cream do. shops serve. Yes. Um, so there's nobody who knows how to swing a hammer or pour concrete or anything there. So they ship all the labor in. Yes. So there's all these people trying to sleep on the ferry, 
and they've got these little bench seats and there's all these people who are just like spread eagle and I tried to get a little shut eye, which is hard to do when you're on a ferry. Well, on a ferry, and then also when you you've already been up for several hours and have yes. driven for quite a while, and then to try to get back into that mode. But anyway, I was on the ferry, and I just almost was drifting off. And these two fat middle aged women sit down in the seat right next to me and just start blah 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 blah. <laughs> Talking about their stupid, ugly kids and just whatever bullshit inanity that yes. went into their minds. And it's like so obvious that I am there on this bench trying to sleep. It's so obvious that they disturbed me because I went ah, and did like the old angry old man that you poked with a stick while he was sleeping. Yes. And they don't care. They're completely oblivious. They don't they don't worry about it whatsoever. I go to another little unused bench and try to lay down and go to sleep. And again, some other group of women, it's always the women, they talk loudly and they <laughs> talk they a lot. They come down and sit down right next to me again. I'm like, why can't they have a quiet section? A section where the lights are dim and people can be quiet and yeah. sleep because it's the early ferry. Yeah. And then today, just, I, I'm wandering around, you know, driving around for work and, you know, people sitting at green lights scratching their asses, not paying any attention to the fact that the fucking light has changed. Three different people change lanes right into my car as I was driving. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Honking the horn. They're just... <laughs> just changing lanes. They don't look. They don't give a shit. Uh, I had a guy... I was in the parking lot of my local convenience store, and there was somebody <clears throat> ahead of me waiting to make a right turn, and there's a pedestrian coming, and the guy, the car ahead of me was just slightly into the sidewalk a little bit, and so he puts it in reverse and starts backing into me so the pedestrian wouldn't, wouldn't have to walk around his car, which yeah. would be the worst thing in the world. And there's somebody behind me. It's a similar thing that happened to me when, when the guy got out of his car and there was the whole like, screaming oh, yes, yes, mess yes, yes, thing and I threatened that. to kill him. But So I start honking, like you're about to back into my car. They just keep coming, keep coming. I finally just rah, laid on the horn for a good five seconds, and they finally stop. The guy looks out and goes, hey, like puts his hand out the window like, what are you doing? And then as he goes away, as finally as the pedestrian goes by and then he has a clear area to, to drive out into traffic, he's like, rah, 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 and honks at me over and over and over Ooh. again. Like, you're about to hit my fucking car, you <laughs> idiot. And then I went to the bank. I parked in the parking lot at the bank because first I was going to pull into the nice little area in front where you could just jump out. I just wanted to shove something into the night deposit drop thing. Yeah. And just as I was about to turn in there, somebody changed three lanes and went ah, and like squealed right into that parking spot ahead of me. So I went, Ugh. and I drove around the block. I went into the little parking lot area. I'm sitting in my car filling out my little deposit slip. This other like Honda, shitty Honda Civic is, is parked next to me. And this large woman with two kids gets out of the bank she gets in the front seat, one of the kids gets in the other front seat, and then the stupid little shithead kid opens the back door and just slams it into my car as hard as you could possibly imagine. And I'm in my car, and there the woman goes, Oh my God, Rufus! Did you dent my car? His name wasn't Rufus. His name was Rufus. Oh, wow. It was weird. fucking Rufus. And she says, did you dent my car? Not, oh, Rufus, you just slammed your door into somebody else's car. She looks over. I'm there like, what the fuck, looking at her. And she just goes, ha, 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 and gets in her car and drives away. I wanted to take Rufus and wring his little neck and then throw his broken body in front of his mother. <laughs> oh, I hate people. I hope Rufus or his mother isn't a listener to the show. Um, yeah, I know where you're coming from on this. <laughs> I, at work today, uh, somebody was complaining, one of my coworkers, about people she know who are just leisurely walking around doing nothing during the day, and she was working the entire time. Yeah. And I think this, and I feel this resentment sometimes, too, the fact that I feel like I work mm -hmm. a lot, and then the people that are out and about don't seem to ever be working. Yeah. And yet they're just taking their merry time to yeah. do everything. And I'm like, listen... I'm working here. I got to go. I got to go. I don't have that much time like you do. But you're the like some fat middle-aged woman going to San Juan Island right. on a weekday to hang out and eat ice cream. Right. Exactly. It's like defer to the person that's working for 14 hours. Well, I'm always so aware of not fucking with other people. Yes. I, if, if I'm walking down the sidewalk or if I let's say I'm talking to a friend standing in front of a store or something on the sidewalk, if people are trying to walk through I'm aware. I look around and I yes. notice, okay, there's somebody coming. I'm going to step aside. Other people just plant their fat asses right in the middle of the walkway. They don't pay any fucking attention to anybody else. They don't care. Yeah. It's just so irritating to me. And the world is filled with these people. You start thinking sometimes that the idiots are the exception and not the rule, but that's not the case at all. The self-absorbed, 
idiots are the rule and people who have just a modicum of intelligence and forethought and consideration are the exception to the rule. Yeah, I'd say that's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> I know the way I live my life. It's I was going to get a milkshake today mm -hmm. uh, at work. So I went over and I went to get this milkshake and I saw there were a bunch of people in line mm -hmm. and I was like, it does make me angry when I get in line behind people who are just leisurely enjoying their day. Yeah. And they sit there, and when they get up to the front, they go, hmm, let me see. And then they look at the menu for a while, and they discuss the different options of, like, a hamburger. What's a hamburger, you know? And they just <laughs> go on and on and on. And you're like, really? Because let's move along here. Yeah. And instead of, like, waiting and getting angry behind those people, I just walked away. Yeah. Because I just can't be around it. Yeah. There's, it's it's so weird because I never know what mood I'm going to land in on a certain day. And I think maybe it's just a cumulative effect over several weeks of people irritating me. And then finally I'll freak out like I'm kind of doing right now. And then, yes. then the, I guess the meter gets set back again. And then it takes another few steam, weeks. steam, yeah. Maybe. Maybe I need to go out and drink. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. But that would help you relax. Maybe. And, um... You also, we were discussing what you look like earlier. I, I came into your apartment and you look like a criminal. You look like a meth head or something. Yeah. Skinny Pete from Breaking Bad, we decided. That's, yeah, that's warm. If, if any of you have seen Breaking Bad, he was one of the drug dealer friends of Jesse's. But with the two weeks of growth on the face, yeah. you've got like a tank top on, mm -hmm. a blue, t dark blue tank top, and you've got like a skull cap on. Well, I tried to explain to Warren earlier that the heat was on in my apartment for some reason, even though it's like in the 60s outside. So I was hot. Yes. So I got out of the shower and I put a shirt on. I was like, oh, this shirt's too hot. So then I was like, oh, I have a tank top. So there you I go. put the tank top on. But then the heat went off, and so it started getting colder. And instead of putting another shirt on, I decided I would put a beanie, or I hate beanie, a stocking cap yes. on my head to offset the coldness. And now I do look, yeah, kind of scruffy, bearded. I've got a couple tattoos. Do you, are you at a comfortable level right now? Do you feel good about it? I feel fine, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, go. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't leave the house looking like this, but. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> People would cross the street to get away. They wander the streets, scavenging for loose change and discarded cigarette butts. Spare a dollar? And give me a motherfucking cigarette. Uh, I ran out of gas ways back. You got any meth? You smoke weed, don't you? Good. I can use some change. They may be mentally unstable and deserving of our charity, but that doesn't mean they can't be selected as... The Warren and Bradley Show, Street Freak of the Week! All right, you people, you're in luck because I didn't think there was going to be a Street Freak of the Week for this week because we're recording several days early and usually my free Street Freak encounters occur on the weekends. And since mm -hmm. we're recording on a Thursday evening, I had not yet had any opportunity to interact with the homeless. But the capper of my horrible day that I was having occurred just a couple hours ago. As I was getting home from work, I, did, I realized that I had no Dr. Pepper. And oh, Jesus. I needed to pick some up before I went home or else I would have none to drink when I got home. So I went to the little convenience store, went inside, grabbed my Dr. Pepper, and also grabbed a pack of extra winter fresh gum, the sugar-free. Yeah. And I was waiting in line, and there was an idiot in front of me who was buying scratch tickets and, of course, had to scratch all the tickets while they were there in line. <laughs> and then if they got any money, they would get another scratch ticket with the money that they had purchased, uh, <laughs> the money that they had won. That's how we pay for our schools, yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. As I was waiting to uh, for the scratch ticket idiot to get finished, an entire crew of people who looked like extras from Breaking Bad, just oh, okay. meth addict, crazy people, walked in. It was a mixed mix crew of men and women, which kind of is a problem for our uh, Street Freak of the Week bumper music because it always just says, congratulations, Mr. Homeless Man. Or Yeah, maybe that's why the women don't like Street Freak of the Week. Yeah. Doesn't include maybe that. we shouldn't be gender We're broadening. specific. Our horizons here. Anyway, we'll, we'll play that anyway, but just this is a woman street freak of the week. It's not okay. a man. So the head meth addict looking person was a woman probably in her, uh, she could have been in her 30s, but she looked like she was in her 50s. Yeah. She had that very like fine, wrinkly, yeah. weird kind of gray, ashy, methy skin. Mm -hmm. And they were all just <laughs> laughing like hyenas as they came in there. And of course, Gupreet, the proprietor of the store, is like, oh, and he has to, he has to start watching because they try yeah. to get crafty. And so he's kind of distracted as I get up. And suddenly I could hear this heavy breathing behind me. And the woman, the main woman, walked up behind me, and her head was basically pushed against my back. Ugh. Like, she pushed her forehead against my back. Yeah. 
And I was standing there rigidly, like, uh, what is she going to do? And then her hand slowly starts walking up my shirt. Ew! Like, not inside the shirt, but on the outside of the shirt. Ugh. And then she goes, taps me on the shoulder, and I go, yes. And she goes, I'm a pepper, too. And I go, <laughs> okay, because I'm carrying a case of Dr. Pepper that yeah. I'm about to purchase. I go, okay. And then she goes to one of her friends, he didn't like my joke. What's wrong? He doesn't have a sense of humor. And they all go, <laughs> and I'm like, this is not a joke. <laughs> what are you talking about? And so I'm like, okay, all right. Still waiting for the idiot with the scratch tickets to get done so I can get and buy my fucking Dr. Pepper and get the hell out of there. Then she gets close again. And I can feel her hand once again crawling up my this shirt. This is her move, apparently. Yeah, apparently. And I'm like, I don't want to look at her because she's yeah. disturbing to look at. And then suddenly she reaches and she, like, fixes my collar. She's like, ah, oh, your collar was flipped up. I go, okay, thank you. And she's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm kind of OCD. I have to, if I see a collar like that, I just have to flip it down again. It's like that with tags, with anything like that. Even a dog's ears, if it's flipped over the wrong way, I have to flip it back the right way. And I'm like, okay. Probably with her scabs, too, I yeah, imagine. Yeah, I'm sure she picks a lot of scabs. I'm like, all right, that's, that's fine. Thank you. And she goes, ha, 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 and starts laughing and cackling. And she goes to her friends like, he looks okay now, doesn't he? She goes, yeah, he looks okay now. And he's like, he looks better than okay. Oh, my. And I'm like, oh, God. And then her friend goes, eh, he's all right. <laughs> and then they start <laughs> laughing some more. I'm like, oh, Jesus That's Christ. That's a pretty good joke. Yeah, it's, that, that was actually a good joke. <laughs> so finally, the scratch ticket idiot gets done. I get up there. I buy my Wait, this Wait, the entire time this guy was oh, still oh, scratching yeah, his tickets? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. And Gupreet apologizes to me for the scratch ticket guy and apologizes to me for the women who are harassing me right in front of the women. He doesn't care because he knows that I'm a normal and that they're not. Yeah. And so they start making like, rah, 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 yelling about that. Yeah. I get my Dr. Pepper, go out, and part of their crew is, is outside smoking. And as I get into my car, there's a, yo, give me a pop, man. I'm like, no, I'm sorry, you can't have a pop. Can I have a cigarette, man? I'm like, no, you can't have a cigarette. Fuck you. Yeah. And as he's saying, fuck you, the woman who was flirting with me, yeah. apparently, by her <laughs> rubbing standards, my back, yeah. uh, she hears her little friend say, fuck you, and goes, fuck you, asshole. And they get in an altercation in front of the mini market. Over you. Over me. <laughs> Fighting over my honor, apparently, or just my, my handsomeness. And uh, it turns into like a slapping match. Oh, really? It oh, got yeah. physical. Ba bam. This. It was, it was a guy that she was fighting with. Yeah. And she just slapped him, like, one, two, three, four, right across the face. Oh, and good. he went, ow, oh, fuck. And then I went, <laughs> okay, I'm leaving now. And I got in my car and drove away. And that was basically the capper of the day of me basically losing all faith in humanity. And then that happened. And I was reinforced. I got to say it again. Pe nope. Not working. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just hanging out. Nobody's working. Yeah. That's a problem. It's a real problem. So there you have it. Congratulations, Mrs. Mr. Slapper. Homeless yeah. man. Woman. Slapper. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Slapper. Yeah. That's a British term for yeah. a slut. You've been selected as the street freak of the week. Darner. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> For you. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like an awful experience, actually. <laughs> Our hats are off to you, Mr. Homeless Man, because you've been selected as... The Warren of Bradley Show, Street Freak of the Week! <laughs> It's Celebrity Minute Time on The Warren and Bradley Show. Celebrity Minute on The Warren and Bradley Show. All right, then. Celebrity Minute. Indeed it is. Our first story, Levi Johnston, penniless, living with his mom, says Source. For those of you in the know, Levi Johnston was Bristol Palin's baby daddy. Yeah. Uh, trib? Trick? Trob? Um, Tron? Trey? Trobe. Trib. Trib. Trip. 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 Trip's dad. No, um, it's not. Isn't Trip the... Uh, 
the Down, Down syndrome, syndrome child of uh, uh, Palin. See. Oh no, no, no. Trip is Trip is the right one. That's their kid's name is Trip. I guess I don't know. Maybe they're both named Trip. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> so he's penniless. Apparently, he's uh, he made more than a million dollars and squandered it on guns, boats, and four wheelers. <laughs> How do you get... Okay, first he of all... He was the Playgirl's winter 2010 cover model. That's how he got the money? Doesn't everyone know that Playgirl is not really for girls, it's for gay men? I th- think so. Isn't that understood? It's probably understood, but I mean... He Women got, don't look at getting pictures of naked men. Do you think that if he knew that, he wouldn't have been in there? I don't... Maybe he's not... They gave him money. Maybe he's not sophisticated enough to know that, though. I have a feeling he's not very sophisticated. If he's buying lots of guns and four-wheelers, then I'm <laughs> <Yes>. assuming... <laughs> And, and and we all know that there aren't any gay people in Alaska whatsoever. No, there are none. They were all ex- they were all gotten rid of in the Great Purge of '94. Um, it's weird that he had money at all, though. You know. You, uh, yeah. What has he done? It's the thing. It's like he knocked up. You impregnate <laughs> in high school the governor's daughter, and yeah. you end up with a million dollars. It's weird, isn't it? My life, my whole life has been completely wasted. He's never, as far as I know, he could have done lots of good things. As far as I know, he's never done anything of value whatsoever. Well, he got Yet his, he ended up with a million dollars. He got his wang out for Playgirl, but... Yeah, good for him. But, uh, that, I was hope that worth a million dollars? I hope he didn't get paid a million dollars just for that. What, what else could he have done? I don't know. What do you get? Why do you get money for just being famous? You, for you have being to do a, something, a right? For fuck up. Um, if any listener out there knows why Levi Johnston has any money or had any money whatsoever, write to podcast at warrenandbradley.com and let us know. Um, his former rep, Tank Jones, <laughs> that's a great name, with whom he recently parted ways, counters that Levi's doing just great. I wanted to work on other projects, says Tank. This was a mutual decision. Okay, the other thing. Why should he have any projects? Uh, I don't know of any project. Wasn't wasn't there some reality show that he was on with Bristol or something? Or no, Bristol's about to do a reality show, I think. Now? Yeah. Oh, that's right, because Sarah Palin just became like a reality TV star after that. Apparently. My God. Yeah, yeah, what, what, that was unbelievable. You know what? Fucking I'm glad John McCain wasn't elected president for the <laughs> the single reason that, like, that's irresponsible to pick that woman to be your vice president. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, well, and the fact that he's a fucking mole person. He is a mole person, but... Yeah, it's... Uh, she's <laughs> basically... If she had had any hopes of ever running for president in the future, I hope that she's completely dashed them by shilling herself out as a celebrity whore and the same with her children as well um you, I, you people in the audience may not like mitt romney for a number of reasons yeah. he is a competent man you know what i mean well he's he has a good like he seems like the president yeah he you seems like what? A, well you know he's managed things he's like run yeah. things he's you know what i mean she just he keeps a little dignity going too I've, I've been annoyed with all of obama's things lately like going on jimmy fallon and doing all these it's like the president should be more dignified. You shouldn't try to... You know, they have attack ads that they're di- running that oh, now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're... he was talking about, uh, y- you know, he's been doing all these more stringent federal guidelines and, and penalties for pot. And then he goes on a talk show and is like, yeah, I smoke pot. Of course I inhale. That's the point. Did a little blow. Like, he's talking about what his former drug use. I, I can't remember <laughs> if it was on Jimmy Fallon or one of those shows. Oh, good for him. And it, basically, I think it was uh, Penn Jillette or something. There was some quote I read from him yelling about how if the federal guidelines that have been in place now were in place when Obama was smoking pot and he had been arrested, he would have been convicted of a felony and there would be no way he could be president now. Yes. it's I don't know. It's just uh, politics and celebrity combining is really obnoxious to me and I don't like it and don't want it to continue. Kim Kardashian will be the governor of California in 2030. Look at that ass. Uh, Lady Gaga angers Thai fans with fake Rolex comment. Apparently she tweeted something about how she had got just gotten into Bangkok. Okay, she tweeted, I just landed in Bangkok, baby. Ready for 50,000 screaming Thai monsters. I want to get lost in a lady market and buy fake Rolex. And apparently there was a firestorm of criticism on the blogosphere for the ties. Okay, when I say tie to you, what comes to mind? Prostitutes. Yeah. Underage prostitutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that, actually, she did them a favor. But I mean, that is what you, that's what Thailand. Yeah, uh, Thailand is a lot of yeah. It's fake Gucci bags. It's prostitutes and yeah, yeah, like Thai lady boys and stuff like yeah. that. I don't. I, I mean, I, I guess that's why they're so sensitive about it. Maybe because everyone does know that that's what Bangkok is about. Um, yeah. I mean, there's more than that. Obviously, well, the food's delightful. Yeah, 
I mean, I enjoy Thai food all oh, the time. Oh, I love Thai food. It's great. They've got some nice temples, some nice architecture going around there. And lovely beaches. They have um, Muay Thai. Thai iced tea. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So there are good things about Thailand, but... Yeah. I imagine probably people in Thailand don't want to be associated with like knockoff Rolexes and prostitution all the time. So I can see why they might well, be a little bit they should, they should just stop selling them. What comes to mind when I say Laos? Prostitutes. Cambodia? Prostitutes. Yeah. There you go. You've got a whole region. <laughs> yeah. Southeast Asia, eh, they've got one major industry going there. That's weird. That, that's Well, I think this comes, too, from like us watching a bunch of Vietnam movies, too. Yeah. And there's like a lot of Vietnamese prostitutes in those movies. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's during a war, so obviously they're... Yeah, gonna... but... <laughs> I mean, it's the it's same... It's a strange thing for that it's region to be associated for, like, with. Eastern Bloc countries, <clears throat> where there's all these women who are basically trying to sell themselves on the internet to foreigners. I mean, it makes sense, because East Asia was more economically <clears throat> viable than Southeast Asia. I mean, things are changing a little bit now, but th that's how that gets ingrained. It's people, what are we going to do? We're going to sell ourselves for money. That's and make fake Rolexes. <laughs> we are going to get some angry tweets at us from our Southeast Asian oh, listeners. I, I know. That contingent is very vocal, usually. <laughs> eh, whatever. I don't think Gaga did anything that crazy. No, and, it's uh, fine. I'm sure she'll be fine. You're okay, Gaga. Let's see. What else did Usher's we Usher's ex-wife claims he slept with bridesmaid. <laughs> oh, Usher. Apparently, they're in the middle of a child custody battle. And his ex-wife, Tamika Foster, wants full custody of the children, and Usher wants extended visitation rights. But during the middle of the courtroom proceedings, Foster's lawyer accused Usher of having sex with one of her bridesmaids. This is the lawyer did this? Yeah, which is funny, because it's not a divorce proceeding. That shouldn't have anything to do with child custody. It's that's Really? That seems like, weird. Like, is he trying oh, yeah. to... yeah. Yeah, well, you slept with a bridesmaid. And no. what's the judge supposed to be like? Do you have any evidence of that? How does that have any bearing on what's going on here? Well, apparently one of the nannies walked in on him while he was having sex with the, with the bridesmaid. I don't know if this was, like, right after the wedding or if this was All later these on. affluent people with their nannies, if they're not sleeping with a nanny, they're having sex with somebody and the nanny walks in. So this is just another one of those examples of... A rich, powerful entertainer having an extramarital affair. I don't Which think. isn't shocking. And another example of like a bunch of people just walking around your house if you're rich and powerful. Oh, that, see, that seems like the worst thing to me. Doesn't it seem unpleasant to have like a nanny, a gardener, like all, all these, these people, housekeepers walking around everywhere? Don't you just want some peace and quiet? To me, being alone is a major part of my life. <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I wouldn't like to always be alone like I am now, but I would still prefer some alone time if it were like it were in you know victorian england where you yeah. could have live-in low-class servants who were paid to keep their mouth shut and would never dream of divulging your crate because they just treated them like a piece of furniture you yeah know? they said anything they wanted in front of them but now you've got somebody who's going to take a picture or tweet whatever you do that's crazy it's just it's not the same <laughs> it's, anymore yeah, it's tough having finding good help yeah. nowadays Oh, let's see. We have a Celebrity Minute update, which is... Oh, Will Smith doesn't regret slapping a reporter who tried to kiss him. <laughs> Good, that. Will. Uh, yeah, this isn't really much of a story as far as I can see, but... But uh, I don't think anything in Celebrity World is really much of a story. It's just people commenting on a story that happened before, and uh, that's was, a story in and of itself. He was on Late Night with David Letterman, and he explained what happened. It was just awkward, Dave, Smith said. They were like, oh, no, we're sorry. You know, it's just his shtick, you know? And I said, well, that's why it's a... What? What is oh, it? That's why his ass got stuck? Oh, what? It's his shtick. That's why his ass got stuck. Oh, that's, it probably makes sense when he says it, because he's like a rapper. So he's like, maybe. Um, it, that's why his ass got stuck. And everyone probably clapped and stuff. Um, indeed, the reporter is known in Europe for his silly PDA with celebs. That means public display of affection. Did Smith overreact? <laughs> I don't know why I read that, because that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Was that like people trying to, on the website trying to get like reaction yeah. and then like responses on the website? People leave comments. And stuff. Okay, this is a, people who leave comments on websites. Yeah. What's that all about? Uh, I wish there were more people who did that on our website. <laughs> but um, why, why would you go to like the Will Smith story and then like argue with people on the internet about it? Yeah. I don't know. Let's let's read one of these comments. At Susan Reardon. So you're saying that as a female, if I were to slap him, I would have to be homosexual because I didn't want some strange guy kissing me? It's because of narrow-minded, opinionated people like you who cause the hatred amongst the masses. 
Why are heterosexual men called homophobes simply because we refuse to allow another man to kiss us on the lips? I have two brothers and two sisters. I don't kiss any of them on the lips. A kiss on the lips is a very intimate and very personal event. Why can't Will choose who he lets kiss him? You know, I have to agree with Michael Byerfly. But what... The- what is he going on in that guy's life that he spent all that time writing that <laughs> on like the Us Weekly like message he wants board? At Su- he, well, he wants Suzanne Reardon to know that what she said was wrong. He's arguing with some this random is the, this woman is on the internet. This what the internet age has done to our society. It's all these people who instantly can have their opinion vetted. Well, not even vetted. They instantly put their opinion online, and that gives them this weird sense of power and a sense of fulfillment where they feel like other people know what I think. Whereas before, you would have to just young, run out in the middle of the street and say, Will Smith's not a homophobe for not letting a man kiss him on the lips. And everyone would go, shut the fuck up. What are you doing? But now he can go on the story. He can write his little comment, and then other people will read his comment. And because they want to feel as though they've been validated and their opinion is important and matters... They'll take him up on that. They'll they'll criticize. They'll they'll debate, and Ugh. then they, they're also horrible to each other because there aren't any repercussions because it's just a faceless person on the other end of a keyboard. That's what happens, right? People yeah. get really angry. And they read sense. read YouTube comments. Recently, one of our friends, Rory, had nationwide notice because of something who, that had happened to him. He had a YouTube video that he posted that got millions of views, and you know a lot of people on his YouTube video were like, "Oh, that's great. You're great." But there's just there's still maybe twenty percent of the people who are like, Fuck you, fag. You're a piece of shit. This is fucking fake. What's your fucking problem? And then other people like arguing back at them? Well, and then supposedly defending him, but then being just as horrible and idiotic. Like it it really makes you fear for the future of America and the human race when you read some of the comments that are on there. <laughs> just the spelling and uh, the grammar, it's just I don't know. We're getting off track with our celebrity minute. I think I think that's enough celebrity minute right now because I'm getting. Oh, there's more no more angry stories. Again. Well, all these stories are stupid. This has been Celebrity Minute on the Warren and Bradley Show. Uh, the Library of Congress has saved 25 sounds. It's weird that they call them sounds as well, because most of these are songs, and most of these Warren and I have never heard of, which I guess makes sense for the Library of Congress to be saving those kinds of things. Um, I was wondering, they always like do this with like films every year, you know, the Library yeah, of Congress yeah. preserves these things. Do you think it's going to matter in 500 years if the Library of Congress had preserved them? Or I don't if- know. It depends on how good they preserve them. Yeah, I guess so. If they're wrapped in lucite. Makes me think of that uh, golden record we sent in with, like, the Viking mission. NASA yeah, yeah, did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what would you think if you got that in another planet? Some alien, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 yeah, they talk about sometimes, too, how we're digitizing all our records now and not keeping paper copies of things. So when our civilization crashes to the ground, yeah. nobody will have any record of anything This anymore. is true, because you think about going back... You know, 100 years, people find old photographs, yeah, memoirs, old, like, letters and, yeah, postcards and stuff. But if everything's kept in a digital format and the power goes out or the yeah. hard drive breaks, it's all gone. Especially if it's in the cloud and it's just on a server somewhere, you don't know where. Yeah. Then even if archaeologists found this server that would be some weird drive from some technology that they don't have anymore or they've moved, you know, it's... It's, it's an interesting uh, problem. Yeah. It's like those people who are burying the nuclear waste. They're trying to come up with a way of, like... <laughs> Showing people in the future not to touch what's below this, you know what I mean? And they're like, "What Just kind put of a symbols?" Yuck sticker on there. Well, exactly. What kind of symbols do you use if you don't know who you're going to be encountering yeah. thousands of years in the future to tell them this is bad for you? Don't, don't come in here. Well, you would have to have some sort of graphic representation of a person's face melting or something like that, you know? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, you know they have the that's the whole safety sign industry is based on trying to make universally recognizable symbols of yeah of a man falling off a cliff. Or, you know, rocks crushing a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a car smashing him and crushing him to death. Yeah, you could tell what's going on. You've done on. a good job in that. Because, I mean, you, in other countries, even like the traffic signs, you know, it's a lot of like standardization. So you mm-hmm. don't have to know the language. You can just get around. You know what a yield sign looks like. You can know when to yield. Mm-hmm. I was just reading about this recently where they were talking about scientists trying to make contact with other civilizations oh, yeah. that might be in the galaxy. 
and the dangers of it, and then also revealing too much to the aliens. Oh, because, God. well, no, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> There's this whole paper written. I think it was the University of Pennsylvania and NASA cooperated on this paper. And it's all about the possible outcomes of contact with an extraterrestrial race or an extraterrestrial yes. intelligence. And basically, they were talking about the attempts that have already gone forward to make contact and how. You know, in the past, <clears throat> we've had information showing the biological structure of men and women. Yes. And talking about how our bodies are composed. And they're like, well, what if they tailor a virus specifically towards oh, humans and Jesus. send it down in a probe? And it's funny because there's these scientists sitting around this room worrying about this shit. And they talk about, you know, there's, there's neutral outcomes, there's positive outcomes, and there's negative outcomes. And they start talking about, you know, introduced species, talking about intergalactic war where pe they come and try to eat us, basically, okay. or they come and try to take our resources, which we've discussed before with the Boreum. But then it's just, it, these are real scientists discussing these things. And now they're saying that any messages that we send should not, we shouldn't send, we shouldn't say too much. It should oh, just please. be mathematical problems or, or <laughs> equations, the universal language of math and, and physics. If we ever do have any contact with... <laughs> another species from beyond the stars mm -hmm. or beyond the planets um the power dynamic will be so asymmetrical it'll have nothing to do with the fact we sent them like a picture of a body they'll know how to kill us you know what i mean it, there, it isn't like they're gonna get this slight advantage because they have that information and we don't well, have it about like the them idea of these aliens out there like god what are we gonna do what, what can we do with these people and then suddenly they get the little it's the picture of the of the guy and the woman with their arms and legs spread out and you yeah. can see their little genitals and then they're like bingo exactly but uh, this is the thing it's not like the only things the things they're sending out there are the only things the aliens are going to see more likely the aliens are going to see like an old episode of car 54 where are you well that's the thing yeah if it's so like it's there's nothing they're going to light do. years away they're getting maybe i don't know some world cup final from 1932 or something yeah you know? they're uh, yeah which will reveal some <laughs> something about <laughs> soccer, I guess. I don't know. It's not something to worry about. Well, it's funny because a lot of what they were talking about was whether or not the aliens would be aggressive. And their theory was that they most likely wouldn't be aggressive because yeah. if they were expansion, expansionist and aggressive, that they wouldn't have been able to sustain their intergalactic colonies or whatever with rapid, ag aggressive growth. It's all just a bunch of masturbation. That's, basically. That is. Th and so basically, they're, they're most likely to be peaceful, but they could still do inadvertent damage to us by, I don't know, it, it, was, it was crazy. I still think it's most likely if they do discover us, they'd be, that's interesting, and try to preserve the plant as some sort of like zoo to see what was going yeah. on. Well, that was another one of the theories they had, is the Earth is a zoo, where there already are aliens who are aware of us, but they just leave us alone. You know, that's not the most <laughs> unlikely thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the eighth... Hey, there's a new Men in Black movie coming out. Yeah, it's got horrible reviews. Well, it seems like a terrible idea. Yeah. Why are they doing it? You know, it seems, but that's kind of the concept there, right? If I recall from the original movie many years ago, uh, the Men in Black are people that are trying to eliminate evidence of aliens, right. From people. Well, because we we do have contact with other alien civilizations, but we don't want humans to know because there would be widespread panic or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. It's not completely implausible that some aliens are making sure we have no contact with anyone else and letting us evolve at our own rate. Yeah. Maybe there's some the, the milestones they talk about of like, well, there's also the one of the doomsday scenarios in the paper was that uh, the aliens will conce see us as a threat in the future. And so they'll stamp us out before we get to the point where we could actually cause harm to any other alien All civilizations. All these geeks just sitting around watching Star Trek, <laughs> thinking this stuff up. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens when you don't have enough information about something, right? Your imagination yeah. starts spinning out of control, and you start stop thinking about what actually is plausible and start imagining weird scenarios where aliens are going to try to stomp you out because they think you're a threat to them. Oh, whatever. Well, and they kept talking about faster-than-light travel, too, which I still th I thought was theater theoretically impossible. I believe it is, yes. We, wormholes, though, are theoretically possible. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know, but that's one of the one of the things in the scientific paper was maybe the aliens are waiting for humans to develop a certain technological milestone, like faster than light travel. It's like, wait, I thought that was impossible. Well, they're probably waiting, and then they'll steal it from us and be like, we didn't think maybe. that was possible. Yeah. Like, God damn you aliens, you're so crafty. Uh, is that enough? Yeah, probably. Well, maybe. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> good.
This has been the Warren and Bradley Show, brought to you by Warren Van and Bradley Victor. For podcast news and information, like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Warren and Bradley. Follow the show on Twitter at Warren and Brad. Subscribe on iTunes and leave a review. For episode archives and episode pictures, go to warrenandbradley.com. And to contact the show, write to podcast at warrenandbradley.com.